Hey guys, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to take on the endocrinology of prolactin. So, okay, in this video, we'll study the three things about prolactin. So, in the first part, we'll take on the source of prolactin, like from where the prolactin is produced. In the second part, we'll take on the functions of prolactin. So, what are the functions of prolactin? While in the third part, we'll take on the regulation of prolactin, like how the secretion of prolactin is regulated. So first, let's talk about the source of prolactin, like from where the prolactin is produced. So guys, as we all know, the pituitary gland, it consists of two parts. Okay, so we have the anterior pituitary gland the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland and we have the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland okay if we zoom on to the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland in the anterior lobe we have some specific kind of cells which are called as the lactotrophs so these are the lactotrophs and it is these lactotrophs which release the hormone prolactin it is written as prl and these are the lactotrophs which secrete or which release the prolactin into the blood. Okay, so this is the source of prolactin. Hence, the source of prolactin is the anterior pituitary gland or the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. Okay, so this covers the first part of our video that is the source of pituitary gland. Okay, so now we'll take on the functions. So let me clear this screen for you. Okay. So yes. So now we have the functions of the pituitary of the prolactin. Okay. So as the prolactin is released into the blood, the primary target for the prolactin is the breast tissue. Okay. So the primary target for prolactin is the breast tissue, and in the breast, the prolactin stimulates the process of milk production okay so in the breast tissue the prolactin stimulates the process of milk production so this is the primary function of the prolactin that is to increase the milk production <laughs> the second function of the prolactin is to suppress the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone okay so gonadotropin releasing hormone which is released from the hypothalamus is suppressed by prolactin as a result of the decrease in the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone there is a decrease in the production of gonadotropins and the release of gonadotropins from the pituitary gland so what are the primary gonadotropins that is fsh and lh so as a result of the inhibition of the release of the gonadotropin releasing hormone there is an inhibition of the release of fsh and lh now as a result of the decreased fsh there is a decreased ovulation or there is inhibition of ovulation so i'll mark a cross over here so there is a decrease in the ovulation as a result of decrease in the fsh and since now since ovulation is not present so therefore there would be no menstrual cycle so there would be a menorrhea that is lack of menstruation so i will write a menorrhea okay quick as a result of the re release of prolactin there is an inhibition of the release of gonadotropin from the hypothalamus gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus as a result of which there is a decreased production of fsh and lh from the pituitary gland as a result of decreased fsh there is a decrease in the ovulation as a result of decreased ovulation or inhibition of ovulation there is amenorrhea no the second leg is the decreased LH. So, as a result of the decreased LH, there is a decreased libido. Okay. So, there is a decreased libido in males and also as a result of decreased LH, there is a decreased testosterone. Okay. 
so there is a decreased testosterone in males so again as a result of decreased LH first there is a decreased libido and then there is a decreased testosterone in the males so these are the functions of the prolactin hormone okay now we will cover the third part of our video that is the regulation like how the prolactin is regulated how the secretion of prolactin hormone is regulated okay so the basic concept of regulation it remains the same like in every pituitary hormone the prime regulator is the hypothalamus so over there it will again be hypothalamus but we will have to see how so let's say this is the hypothalamus okay and this is the pituitary gland or the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland from where the prolactin is synthesized or is being synthesized okay so this is the prolactin from the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland so from the hypothalamus we have a pathway okay we have a pathway which is called as tuburo infundibular pathway okay what tuburo tuburo infundibular pathway infundi bular pathway okay so via this pathway the hypothalamus produces dopamine okay so the hypothalamus produces dopamine and this dopamine it inhibits the secretion of prolactin okay so what is the primary inhibitor or the primary controller of the secretion of the prolactin that is dopamine and the dopamine is released from the hypothalamus via a pathway which is called as the tuburo infundibular pathway so this is the prime regulator of prolactin like how the prolactin is uh, regulation is regulated so when the prolactin is produced it acts via the same pathway to control its secretion so this is the prolactin when the prolactin is in excess it would stimulate it would stimulate it would stimulate the hypothalamus to produce the dopamine and to release the dopamine and hence the prolactin will inhibits its own secretion via the negative feedback so this is the negative feedback via which the prolactin is regulated negative feed back okay so this is how the prolactin is prolactin is regulated so we have the third part of our video that is the regulation of the prolactin so in this part i will try to like inculcate a bit of pharmacology see we have two type of dopamine like do, uh, the drugs interacting with dopamine okay we have dopamine agonist and we have dopamine antagonist okay so we have dopamine agonist and we have dopamine antagonist so the, so the dopamine agonist like the bromocriptine and the cabergolin will act to decrease the secretion of prolactin okay they will decrease the secretion of prolactin while the dopamine antagonist tell me the dopamine antagonist yes the atypical antipsychotics or the typical antipsychotics these will act to increase the secretion of prolactin okay so this is to be like reminded or this is to be kept in mind like the dopamine agonist they will decrease the secretion of prolactin while the dopamine antagonist will increase the secretion of prolactin so as a result of this the dopamine agonists are used in the treatment of the tumors of the prolactin that is the prolactinoma okay the tumor secreting the prolactin that is the prolactinoma in the treatment of prolactinoma we use dopamine agonists because they will decrease the secretion and decrease the production of the prolactin so this is all about the prolactin hormone i hope you have liked this video if you have watched till end so please subscribe to my channel if you want more videos like this